There we go, people. The absolute second I got this game, people are like, review it. Tell us what you think of the story mode. And here it is, people. Here are the pros and cons of the Mortal Kombat 11 story mode. And I can tell you this, there were good bits and there were bad bits. If someone tells you this story mode was perfect, that is a lie. And if someone tells you this story mode was all bad, that was a lie. There was pros and cons. And let's start with the cons. Number one, for me, Shao Kahn's run. Now let's talk about your boy Shao Kahn, considered by many to be the best fighting game boss period. Many people believe this. This guy is very important to the franchise and a complete powerhouse. Whenever you see Shao Kahn on screen, he demands attention, okay? He demands respect, but this time around, not the case. I'm gonna keep it real with you. He felt like an average character. He didn't feel like the top boss he used to be, and he was taken out far too easily. I see people complaining about Katana taking him out. I have no problem with that. In fact, that's a good move. Katana probably has the most beef and gripe with Shao Kahn. So yes, her killing him, I'm down with that. But it was far too easy and it should have took a lot more than that. It should have took every ounce of strength in Katana's body with help. This is Shao Kahn, a man who absorbs 60 billion souls. Or are we gonna retcon that too? What happened to all of this guy's power? A complete master of black magic, fought Raiden to a standstill, <laughs> damn near conquered all the realms. The guy's a big boss, he deserved a big finish, that's all I'm saying. No problem with Katana taking him out, it should have been a momentous effort to take out a big boss. This guy went from being the main boss of the franchise to a mid-card talent enhancer, that's what he was. They brought this guy back to put over other characters. That's it. They treated this man like the WWE treated Dean Ambrose in his last month. <laughs> and in fact, you done that man a disservice. And if Shao Kahn saw this, he would not be proud. In fact, he would be pissed. Number two, Koto Khan. Good God Almighty. Once again, buried in MKX. Terrible in the game. Decent in the comics. In MKX, you have this guy been washed in his own town by Kun Jin. Comes to MK11, dude's a beast in his chapter, kicking ass in his chapter, yeah? The second his chapter ends, dude turns into a damsel in distress. Terrible performance and showing from Koto Khan in Mortal Kombat 11. This guy needed to be saved like three or four times. Once again, the guy's the emperor of Outworld. He should be stronger than most competitors. For some reason, these people think everyone has equal strength. No, it doesn't work like that. Certain characters are stronger than certain characters. How in God's name is Jade knocking the hell out of Koto Khan? How? How does Koto Khan need to be rescued every two seconds? And once again, you have a guy who's big, huge, built like a freaking tank, can control the sun, can scorch you, godlike powers, can turn into a freaking tiger, and this guy is helpless outside his chapter? <laughs> what a freaking waste of space. Koto Khan, you know what? You were right to give up the throne of Outworld, because after the way you were written and booked, you don't deserve to run Outworld. I am sorry. Yeah, thumbs down. Koto Khan was written terribly. Bad booking. The saving grace of this is that Koto Khan and Shao Kahn are sick outside the story mode. Cool characters, good fatalities, good fatal blows, and people will use them. But as far as the story went, they were poorly written. Con 3, Aaron Black, Scarlet, Revenant Cabal, Cabal, Revenant Jade, my freaking boy Cabal, a freaking jobber. All jobbers, they had nothing for these characters. Huh? You have someone like Aaron Black shows up looking tough. All the story scenes, Aaron Black has his big epic entrance. Two seconds later, this guy's on his back looking up at the lights. Aaron Black is a freaking jobber. If you didn't know, now you know. Your boy Baraka surpassed them. The Collector. Now I'm gonna be real with you. The Collector was a freaking waste man. Straight up minimal impact it's almost like reptile called him up and said hey you want to be the biggest lackey in the game i'll give you 30 bucks you can take my role and the collector said yes the collector is ferrator 2.0 
Con 5, Noob Cybert, and oh my god. Before the game came out, I said, please, give this guy a story run. Give this guy some credibility. Give him some decent wins. The game has arrived, and Noob Cybert is once again a talent announcer. A jobber. Noob Cybert won no matches in Mortal Kombat 9. Missed MKX and has came into MK11 and is a freaking jobber. One of the coolest characters and should be one of the most powerful characters in the game considering his achievements and what he has done. Plus this guy has new awesome powers plus a clone. Essentially when you're fighting Noob Cybot, you're fighting two people. How has this guy gotten weaker with better powers and one more person to fight? You're fighting two on one when you fight Noob Cybot. You are aware of that, right? This guy gets no respect whatsoever. But once again, outside the story, as one of the best fatalities in the game, awesome character. So if you don't give a damn about the story mode, Noob Cybot is sick. However, in the story mode, dude was garbage. Straight facts. And lastly, the last con I'd say is just resetting the whole timeline. It's kind of a cop out, you know, making MK9 and MKX basically irrelevant at this point. And now we don't even know what's canon or what's not. But once again, the saving grace is Liu Kang is in charge. So most likely he'll bring back all the good guys. So everyone will be alive again. So that's the saving grace. And those were the cons. To me, I see people bringing up Ronda Rousey. The question is this, you saw her cut promos into WWE, right? Yeah, terrible. What did you think she was gonna become a professional voice actor in that short space of time? I expected nothing from her, so I was disappointed by nothing. Okay, as far as Jade being thirsty as hell, <laughs> that's debatable. But on to the pros, okay? And the good thing is there were more pros than cons. Pro number one. The presentation, the graphics, the visuals, they blew this shit out of the park. Thumbs up, easily the best looking story ever. They've got this on lock. Ace, you get a thumbs up right there. No complaints. The voice acting and the facial expressions, once again, thumbs up. Ace, top quality stuff. These characters displayed emotion. You could feel it, awesome. Another pro, the action scenes and the fight scenes. Now for me, I'm a guy who likes shit like Hong Back, Undisputed, Bloodsport, I've watched every Van Damme flick. I love my little martial art flicks, so I can appreciate a good fight scene. Some of these were awesome. The character interaction scenes. Most of them were pretty good. Kitana and Liu Kang, uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, obviously. I don't think there's any Mortal Kombat fan that wasn't pleased and happy with the fact that Scorpion and Sub-Zero teamed up on a mission. Awesome. Liu Kang and Kung Lao, once again, another good scene that developed the character. This scene right here showed you clearly why Liu Kang is a chosen one and Kung Lao isn't. Well, for one, he actually showed up to all the training sessions and two, he's clearly more disciplined and focused. Whereas Kung Lao is straight to the point, cocky and more brash. And this little scene right here, as short as it was, showed you that to the T, which was good. More pros would be some of the characters that got well-earned pushes. Let's give it up for your boy Baraka, man. For once in his life, this guy actually got some credibility. They actually put some respect on your boy Baraka's name. Baraka was freaking more important than Aaron Black, Cabal, Jade, Scarlet, and many others. People were fighting to get Baraka on their team. <laughs> and when you hear comments like this, The Cotton Warriors are legendary. Then you know the Mortal Kombat world is changing. But I'm happy for Baraka, man. Finally, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. Dude is still a freaking journeyman, a talent announcer, but he's now further up the card. Well done, Baraka. In fact, Baraka had a better run than freaking noob Cybot. That's crazy. Raiden passing the torch to Liu Kang. That was easily one of the better moments in the story. Even at first, I didn't know what the hell was going on. But when I saw what happened, I was like, wow, that was a gutsy move by Raiden. This guy has made his mistakes, but has redeemed himself right here. He made amends. Definitely an honorable move by Raiden. Well done. 
but I've got one question for you, Raiden. If you knew this fusion technique, why didn't you use it in MKX? You know, when Shinnok was about to kill you, you know what would have been cool? If you had fused with Fujin, another god, do you know how powerful you would have been, Raiden? <laughs> nah, but I digress. Well done, Raiden. And of course, one of the best pros in Mortal Kombat 11 is the fact that Liu Kang, your boy, that has earned his place in the Mortal Kombat universe is now finally back on top. Well earned, well deserved. Welcome back, Liu Kang. Thank God. Now, I was one of the few people that thought killing off Liu Kang was a bad idea. I thought it was a terrible idea, but everyone else was like, oh, it added character to him. It added personality to him. Hey, guess what? Bullshit. Revenant Liu Kang sucked. The idea that the Mortal Kombat champion can now be undead and instantly turn into a jobber and a side character sucks. The character was garbage, I am sorry. I never bought into it, never bought into the Revenant shit. So thank goodness all of that is over and this man is back on top where he belongs, being pushed. That's a double thumbs up for me. When this guy showed up on the battlefield. He stole the show. That was freaking awesome. In fact, the majority of the cast got new feats and new notable victories. And I loved the fact that all the old guys were now given their chance to shine. Your Kung Lao, Kitana, definitely improved hair. Liu Kang is now OP as hell. Got a ton load of new feats. I'm gonna have to make a respect to Liu Kang video. He's now definitely in a different league to the majority of the cast. Probably gonna have to redo the strongest Mortal Kombat characters video too. But yeah, I'd say overall, there's definitely more pros than cons in this story mode. In fact, I prefer this story mode to MKX, but under MK9. So yeah, people, rate this story mode out of 10.